Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, last week or so, I don't know what day is anymore, I asked on Twitter, uh, what was your hardest part of learning React.js? Because I was seeing tweets of people struggling of learning React.js and I was curious what people found hard. Because I've now used React for five years and I am very far removed from that initial hurdle of learning React.js. I came from using Angular JS before, and the biggest shift for me was going from two-way data binding with Angular JS, which was both the best thing about Angular JS and also probably the worst thing as well because of the bugs that I would encounter. And just trying to debug it was just seeing those call stacks when you get an infinite loop cycle or something was the worst part of Angular JS 1.4. And then going to React where it was just props um, almost seemed primitive in nature. It was almost uh, too simple. And in some ways, I think the biggest shift with React for me was how hands-off it was with how to do things. And the best way to do things was thinking if I was just going to write JavaScript, what would I do? And that was kind of hard when I was coming from the Angular way of doing things and then before then Backbone way of doing things. So it was hard, but... I was curious what people thought about nowadays, so I asked this question online. I just want to go through them with you, and I just kind of read about it, and then just kind of share my thoughts and see if maybe I can help you in your journey of learning React. Um, we have a comment from Sean about making data-only components, which I don't fully understand, I'll be honest, Sean. Uh, I probably should have asked a clarifying question there, um, but I don't know what that means. Uh, it's like PHP. Uh, that is funny and true. Uh, Famously, React was made at Facebook, which was also famously and still is built on PHP. And one of the biggest strengths of PHP, which they brought into React, is that every time you render a page, you are starting from nothing, which means that there's no state that you have to worry about beforehand, which is deceptively immensely powerful. It means that when you write some PHP code, and this also applies to React, you write what you want the page to look out look like given the state at that time, which is React. You write your React page, how you want it to be, and given what the data is, it just renders it there. And having that be in the browser, not in the server, I'm sure it's definitely a weird shift, but the model, the mental model is, is the same, so hopefully it's not too bad. Um, a lot of replies mentioned Redux. Uh, Redux has done... Uh, a lot of good for the React community and also a lot of harm because, I mean, I'm just like everybody else. You're starting to learn a new language, a new framework, and you want to learn the best way of doing things from the beginning. And it may be that you're learning Ruby on Rails and you're learning all the different parts of it, how to use them both off me together. And it can become immensely overwhelming. And the same thing with React. You learn React, so you have to learn Redux, you have to learn CSS emotions, and uh, it's just too much. And it's, I think, a foot gun in some ways that people try to learn Redux when they're learning React because it's not necessary. It's not necessary at all. You can just learn React, not worry about it. Um, but I definitely hear that pain because Redux is vastly harder to learn than React. I'm pretty sure I have a video about Redux somewhere where I talk about the mental model of Redux, but it's definitely the hardest thing there. Well, this is fun. This could be true for almost anything where you feel like you know it, but you don't actually know it. Um, I feel that way with Rust right now where I've learned Rust many times and I'm only slowly starting to write it. I feel like in many ways, learning a new thing is like climbing a, uh, a hill, kind of like that old fable with a guy pushing the boulder up where your knowledge is you pushing that boulder up the hill and you get to a certain point where you think you understand things and you try to actually walk around the boulder to only see the boulder fall back lower. But it doesn't fall back to the beginning. It falls down a little bit, but not all the way. So you have to get run back and push it back up. And eventually, before you know it, you've reached the top, but it's almost... That almost happens when you aren't expecting it anymore, which is really frustrating because you don't know when that happens, but it happens without you realizing it. As long as you keep trying, eventually you should achieve um, knowing it, but it definitely takes time. Uh, the right life cycle method. Yeah, 
that's definitely why I think a big part of why hooks were made to kind of get you out of that mental life cycle. That's also, I think, a very, it's a holdover from older frameworks where you have life cycle of events where you kind of expose the innards of the framework to the user so you can kind of do what you want with it. Whereas now with React hooks, they're kind of just make that part of React itself where you use hooks when you're designing applications and that's part of it there. Uh, data flow is hard. Um, knowing when to draw the line between props, drilling, and context is, um, I think when you realize that there is no right answer, you're almost free to do what you want. Uh, you can make some arbitrary rules where if you're prop drilling more than three layers, then maybe you should switch to context, but there's also exceptions to that rule. There, there is no rule when you should go from props to context. It's what you prefer. I mean, hell, you can make your entire application all context, and that's fine. It'll work, that's fine. It's just what's gonna make it easier for you to update and maintain your application. There is no rule, so just do what you think is best for your application. Uh, the unidirectional data flow. Yes, that is interesting, where you have data down, functions back up. Oh dear, hit the green screen. Data flow, yeah, data flow is hard. Uh, it's, again, away from that two-way data binding model of Angular and other frameworks where you have to kind of, with React, you're more on your own when you're thinking about where data is being created and where it is flowing. Um, it's like a river. It's flowing like a river. That's where it's flowing. Refs suck. Yeah. Refs, I mean, refs are a leaky abstraction in React. Uh, it, it's an escape hatch because if you need to use refs, then you need to use something that's beyond the purview of React itself. If you're using refs with hooks as like an instance variable, that's one thing, but using refs to get the DOM element, then yeah, you're intentionally stepping outside of React, but um, they are hard. You know what? Performance optimization hooks, same. Uh, but also I rarely need to worry about it. I have delved into the dev tools to understand where things are sometimes, and I think I understand what's going on, but I don't really, but yeah, that's hard. Definitely with you there. Um, interesting, before hooks, 16.8 was when hooks came around. Uh, very unfriendly experience to me as a beginner. Love to hear more about why. I know that React is trying to revamp their dev, their uh, their docs pages, which they, I'm glad they're doing that because that is way past due. Uh, when I've looked at the view docs pages with my other videos compared to React, it's, um, Sad, the comparison there, because the view docs pages are just outstanding. And the React docs page has definitely fallen into some need of uh, maintenance. So I'm glad they're putting effort towards there. Class components, yeah, yeah, they were, yeah. Weirdly enough, I find people find them more helpful than hooks, but maybe that's an old thought that I have. Uh, some of the fish can make something cool, that's funny. Uh, unit testing. Um, I've now gone from Enzyme to React testing library, and I would most definitely uh, encourage you to switch to testing library because it lets you write tests more like what the code works like in the browser. And I find them to be immensely more maintainable and easier to write and read. Optimization hooks, yes, that is hard. Um, uh, again, there's no right or wrong rule uh it's i can't safely say that you can't make your application worse by just not using these hooks or just using them but you're not going to get too you're not going to stray too far from the baseline without using these things so i wouldn't worry about it too much life cycle uh yeah migrating is a hard thing to do that's definitely a big part of migrating from classes to hooks I don't have really great advice there, but just to make it, you know, one step at a time, but maybe making some helper functions for that. Uh, changing my mindset to, <laughs> yeah, uh, separation of concern. It's amazing um, when advice that's been so ingrained is kind of blown up and reacted that in a big way where it completely conflated data, JavaScript, and HTML one location. But I mean, in many ways, I agree with the logic for why it's doing so. I think that's also a big thing is just in your own day-to-day -day work, challenging the status quo and 
making sure it's how it is for good reason. Like, is it, is the way you're doing things now making your life better? Like, was a decision made from previous persons at your company a decision that still applies today? Because just because it was there first doesn't mean that it's still good today. So it may be good just to question that and reevaluate whether it should still hold true, uh, which I try to apply in every part of my life, both technical but also non-technical. For example, if you're doing stand-ups every day and no one's really getting much value from that, rather than just saying, well, that's scrum, say, no, my team does not really benefit from this. Let's make it every other day instead. Just challenge what you think, like self-examine what you think is good and do what you think is best. And that's what React did, which is uh, a hard thing to do, to have that insight. Hooks are hard and of course, Redux. So that's kind of like the list of answers. Um, hopefully you found that inter interesting in some ways. Um, I'm still trying to get back to where I was when I first learned React to kind of re-remember why learning React was so hard for me. Uh, when I first learned React, it was actually React Native, which was a whole another layer of complexity, having to uh, wrangle with Objective-C in some parts, which was um, maybe a bad idea to do, but <laughs> what can you say? Uh, I'd be curious to hear your comments in this video, what you find hard about React and learning about React. Um, hopefully with the new docs pages, it kind of alleviates some of those pain points, but for now, hopefully videos like these will help you along that way. That's the video for now. Catch you again on the next one.